and you lie. Why lie? Because you're normal. Excuse me? I said because you're normal. You're ungrateful. We fight, risk our lives for you. Evil mutants, robots, crazy aliens. I gave him up. I gave him up because you can't say thank you. Because I have to stomach your questions and prove that I'm a person. I lie because the truth is we're nothing like you. Thank God, because it's the only reason you people are still alive. Kareem, I mean, we, we, let's just go, let's go ahead and skip episode five. Let's talk about episode six. So in episode six, right we pick back bitch. up with the uh, nothing's happened. With the nothing's happened Marie. at all. In episode, <laughs> yeah, nothing happened at all. I think they have uh, yeah, you, you pick back up with the owl story. <laughs> they do. We're back on X ninety one point one out of Genosha. What's the left of it? This one, <laughs> this then he goes out to little Anna Maria, our daughter Rose from Mystique. Sorry, everyone you love always dies. <laughs> I don't know why someone would create that song. Yeah, so we we start off. Uh, are you playing a song? Because I don't hear you. I, oh, okay. Hear you. I, yeah, I it, it, was playing it, it, the Ace of Base finished. song. Okay. Was that the Ace of Base song? It was Which the one? Ace of Base song they play in the show. Happy Nation? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, that doesn't sound like Happy Nation, it. but maybe. Wait, wait. So, wait. I'm, I'm a quick pause here, though. Cream, are you not hearing the music when he plays it? No, I don't even hear his mic. Like I saw him singing to it, and it just wouldn't mute. Well, that's so weird. I was, I heard the music. I got the yeah. I, I got heard the music version of Streamyard. <laughs> that's that's fair. Like they 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 already hit him with the with the audio strike. But I heard the music, but that didn't sound like the the song. But that's cool. Was it's the well, same when you played earlier, though, right? I'm not. No, I played uh, with Khalifa. I actually switched them. I think I should have played Happy Nation the first time. But you get the gist. It's fine. I'll change okay, the, both those sounds sounded exactly the same to me on my end, and <laughs> he he didn't hear it at all. Something is going on with our equipment. At the, uh, the adversary is he's mucking around in here. No! Oh, we can't be seen! Oh, no! We can't be recorded! <laughs> <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't go well for him the last couple weeks. That's fair. That's uh, fair. Uh, to, for, the, for the listeners, uh, Ken just did the John Cena, you can't see me, which <laughs> turns out The Rock can indeed see him. So... Saw him whooped his ass. <laughs> Kareem, go ahead. Give it. Give us. Give us a breakdown. The shakedown. Uh, we start up everything the else. Episode down with uh, I guess they're doing some kind of like this guy gets it. I don't know. Interview behind the scenes of the X Mansion or something. Now, now that uh, mutants have been accepted or yeah, accepted by the UN uh, as a, mm. or I guess Genosha has been accepted by the UN as its own nation. So they go and interview the X Men, and they have this kind of like. I guess prelude because this is ninety seven. This is before reality TV becomes a big thing. It's a twenty twenty interview, uh, basically, yeah. But we also get I'm sort of behind the scenes of it, though, right? So uh, I forget the name of the lady. Who is it? Trish, who eventually becomes like Beast's girlfriend or something like that. Yeah, Trish. What is what is the uh, Tilby? Trish the Dish. I don't know. Essentially, yes. She's interviewing them. Uh, it starts with Scott uh, because Jean couldn't be bothered to be found. She decided to go be Moses and part the weird sea wherever she's at. They kind of float through. Some she's memories. in the lake out back. She's she, out by the lake. Yeah, they have a lake. She's she's dealing. Well, she's with like it. in the lake though, but like she's part of right. the water, so it doesn't touch her, which right. is weird. Seems like a like well, a unnecessary reason to use telekinesis. Could she just gone on the lawn? No, no. She wanted to be away from the prying eyes, but also. Uh, to work on training her powers and put little memories in all the little bubbles and kiss Wolverine out of, out of Prying Eye's way. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Wolverine Megan, walks up behind her. Again, Scott's in the, in the house being interviewed. Jean's outside. Wolverine comes up to her and is trying to figure out, hey, what are you doing? She's saying, hey, I'm trying to figure out which memories are mine, which ones are Madeline's. Uh, everything's a little bit confusing. Uh, and I, she goes on this whole monologue about how the Phoenix Force called to her to like, you know, explore universes, but she stayed because Scott's got beautiful eyes that she somehow was able to see because the Phoenix Force held everything back or whatever. So that's why she stayed. Because of two brown eyes. And nothing happened. Jean was using the power of the Phoenix to block my optic blasts. And we could see each other's eyes. They anchored me. Focused me. His eyes 
made me stay. While that's happening, Scott is giving an interview to Trish Tilby where they are kind of telling the same story. Scott was not in a, there's no reason they never should have put Scott in front of uh, Cyclops in front of the cameras. It's clearly he's an emotional wreck. Like his kid was the leader a week ago, like beast, you're handling it. Go get in there, champ. Just literally anyone else. Well, that's what I mean. They do interview to your Beast, point, but I think more sense. Yeah. Jubilee as well. Yeah, they interview yeah. Jubilee, and then somehow Beast blushes through the blue fur and whatnot. They, they yeah, that, that's, that's impressive. That's a part of like, oh, like, how does it? He's got blue fur. Like, he's just, that, all right, he's that embarrassed. He's like, oh, oh, my stars and garters, but I don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Jubilee is actually the first part of the interview, and then they kicks over to Scott, well, Scott and. Matt, or yeah. Gene go through their versions of what's happening in their lives. Gene uh, ends up kissing Logan. He decides to like, hey, you know what? Now's not the time to try and take advantage of you because you have no idea who the fuck you are or what you're doing. So he tells her like, hey, go back to Scott. You guys figure that shit out. Don't come. I'm not. I'm not your pity man. Yeah, Wolverine's a persecution. I'll take advantage of you later. Effect. Exactly when you know what you're doing. Yeah, that much better. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, then I think at some point, Scott ends up flipping a switch because Trish um, asks about his son. There we go. Which, again, to her, to, to her defense, she has no idea that the son is in the future. Well, he he should. Like, a murder investigation is opened up after this interview because he cannot answer <laughs> yes. where his son is. He cannot answer that question um, and probably I, I should mean, have... I, and then also, like, she brings up, like, the doctor said that, you know, you, he, he wouldn't deliver your son. And that sets him off even further. So part of me is like, this is a this is a bit of oh, a no, takedown, no, no. like, interview. The doctor, that's the point. The doctor doesn't say that. He he says something else, which really pisses Scott off. Scott says he wouldn't even, yeah. he wouldn't even deliver it. So the doctor actually takes credit yeah. for delivering the child. And Scott's like, whoa, 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 that's not what fucking happened, which is why he goes, that's why, uh, thanks for clearing up. That's why he goes goes off, because yeah. uh, she asks, yeah, where's the, where's the child? He doesn't, he kind of dances around the question. And then she says, well, we have medical records and stuff like that. Like the doctor said he delivered it and, you know, it was, you know, so many outs, whatever. And Scott goes like, well, he didn't. He said he wouldn't deliver it because he's a mutant. And he goes off and he goes into what do they call him. Bright Clops. Is that, is that what his name is? When he's uh, Scott was oh, Scott was right. Yeah. And he gets angry no, we, Scott, militant Scott. We, we are so. setting up Scott as Magneto. He, he does. He does the line like basically you're only alive because we allow it. And you can't even be grateful for when we save you. Like he's he's clearly kind of fundamentally broken right now. Um, yes. But they are setting up Scott with uh, yeah. The Scott was right. Yeah, uh, and that's when I think we get the line from B saying, "Oh my," because he had realized that the uh, interview just tanked. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I mean, th- to be fair though, like this is a, this is a more to a certain degree, it's a better, more appropriate response than the comics. Like the condensing of everything does like. It is like like speeding timelines up, but it's also like he should be pretty messed up right now. You shouldn't just be like, well, yeah. I remember when Madeline took my baby and went off because she was upset with me. And then I just went around and did space adventures with the guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is a better, more appropriate response to what actually to to what happened in his world. That he's just like, this is just my, my it's turned upside down. Like, I, I can't. Yeah. And instead of just like time to go on another mission. I, I fully expect after this that he is going to kind of go magneto pretty once again. Yeah, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Um, I, I guess we're covering all this before we get to the main event, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, this is how an order goes because the next scene is like he finally storms out of there, meets Jean as Jean's coming back from her, her kiss with Logan. No? Uh, he go, we cut to, I think we do, I think we jump to Genosha because, or at least on the plane, because Magneto, okay, psych, right. uh, Rogue, and... Yeah, Magneto's throwing shade for no reason. Yeah, He's Magneto's just, like, just tossing it left and right. He's like, you know, you can't fly, so if this thing went up, I'd let you die. Like, that's essentially what he's saying. Like, you're you're yeah. dead weight in this ship. <sighs> this is taking forever. Gambit, please remember that should the new Blackbird suffer a malfunction, you are the only soul on board for whom gravity would most certainly be an issue. <laughs> like, it's like, no one asked you, Magneto. Yeah, because like, Magneto... <laughs> was trying to get it in, and now his third wheel's here, stopping progress. That's what's yeah, happening. I mean, as far as time, as, as, if time is continuous on this show, he also tried to kill her, too. 
and Gambit on several occasions. So I'm like, he, he forfeited the trying to trying to sleep with the thing in between that when he fought them and tried to kill them. But I mean, either way, I mean, it's X-Men. You just not like since, not since the last yeah. five minutes though. Like that's it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Not, not since he's been back. Yeah. yeah. Not since he's been back. Since so they, back, they landed in Genosha, which is I think an allegory uh, for Krakoa the way that, the way they present it this time around. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say like they were very much like uh, let's just pull straight from Wakanda. Like that's the that's like kind of the most like here's here's a well yeah fair it, enough. It's yeah. giving that vibes like hard, especially after. The MCU version seeing that, but yes, it is. Sure. It is going more towards the idea of like the mutant utopia of a of a private nation, like being able to be free. And it's it plays this um the song we were talking about earlier, and they get met on the platform by I believe Val Cooper and no no Val, Val Cooper and uh, Moira Madeline. not Moira uh Madeline uh, Madeline thank you oh Madeline yeah yeah that's right yeah because uh they explain like hey we're glad that you found a a place since you left and we don't know how long it's been since she's been gone but enough to at least be an ambassador of some sort um and then they take them to the quiet council eventually which they have that meeting uh which they which just bring in from a more recent version of the x-men run so far which is why i say krakoa because it yeah kind of has hints of that yeah and they, well, and they it, staff it with moira as you mentioned which they make it a very strong point that she's a human on the council uh, um, yeah. uh, there's my my one of my favorite Emma is there. Emma Frost is there. It's White Queen. Uh, Sebastian Shaw. Uh, who else Banshee. was there? Who? Banshee. Banshee. Banshee, and we're miss- are we missing someone else? And I think that was it. Well, Madeline. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, I I was confused because they in- they. On in the episode, they show you Exodus, who happens to be on or was part of the quiet recent quiet council. He's just dancing there. with with. He's just a dancer out there. Yeah, yeah. One of the most well, powerful. powerful mutants. Mutants. Yeah, Good. one of the most powerful mutant dancers. Is what you're going to say? Good yeah, dancer. he's feeling he's feeling the rhythm, feeling the rhyme. Come on, guys, it's X Men time. Hmm? Nice. Good. We uh we also get uh a peek back at our one of our favorites from the old show, uh, Nightcrawler. Play back and he's messing around with everybody. Uh, and he gives uh Gambit, who has been very uh suspicious one of Magneto, but now of Krakow as I mean of uh Genosha as well. Uh, he's looking at their prices, he's wondering why everyone, you know, how this is uh happening, and some of the he's getting offhanded comments from Rogue that he's like, What the hell's going on about this? Uh, and uh, Nightcrawler basically tells him, like, Hey, you know, chill out, you're you're at a you're at a, a place of peace with friends. Why don't you enjoy it and maybe go marry Rogue finally? Quit stringing her along. Well, I mean, he, yeah, he's. Well, I mean, the, the other thing too is that he's saying like, you know, why is it ten dollars here? So, and then uh, to to uh, Nightcrawler's point, he's like, hey, this is a you know, this is a, a new nation. We're just starting, so if things are we things are a little bit off kilter. We're just getting started. And he's like, yeah, but also maybe Gambit's asking questions people don't like to ask. It's like that's he, he's dead on there. Like that's the he's. He's the lowest lane in this moment of like, hey, you know what? Maybe someone should be asking these questions. Yeah. Well, yeah, Sebastian Shaw is on the quiet. Yeah. Council. I can tell you exactly yeah. why they are $10 yeah. apples. I mean, let's put it this way Sebastian, the apples themselves are probably a buck or two. Sebastian Shaw moved up to five, and then Emma needed her to make sure that she doesn't get cut out of anything. So it raised yeah, it all right. over the two. I mean, that's the thing, though, too. Like, we can get Black Tom over here and just he's like, oh, you want some trees? Here's some trees. I got apple trees. I got pumpkins. You want pumpkins? I got. I got pears. Like, yo, you want to buy some toothbrushes, man? This is some real fly personal hygiene equipment I got here, man. And I got a hell of a hair dryer over here too. Check it out. If we <laughs> we have these mutants who can do these things, who's to that's, say that's I mean, not that, happening still? And they're still just charging ten dollars for an apple. Just, exactly. They're like supply and demand. Like you supply. Fair it enough. It would be the most hellfire club thing they could possibly do. We also get a bunch of cameo uh, mutants. We get Dazzler. We finally f- figure out where she went to. Yeah. Uh, what's the What's the guy with the pink skin muscle or gelatin looking guy? Oh, we get Glob. Oh. Glob. Yeah. We get uh, Leech. We get Pixie. Pixie, yeah. I mean, there's, there's we get a bunch of like smaller ones too that yeah. you, you'd have to really dig into like some of the. Yeah, you get multiple like... man up there. I love that one. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. We know where he is, is at the back of the show. Well, because he's well, that's the thing. He he's an X Factor, 
So it's like that's another nod back to us just having. Uh, so is Havoc now. around somewhere? That that's a good question. But like no. it's we we just saw oh, no. Borge though, so that's the tie there. No. I mean, who do you think Madeline's banging on, on, on that island? There. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Thank yeah, that's, you. That's that's what Havoc. That's why Havoc goes to the island eventually. It's he's like, well, what? There's the, I I need my brother, my brother's sloppy seconds. Okay, let's let's go. Wait, you're a sloppy second. I'm a sloppy second. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, I'm a sad boy being sad. <laughs> uh, you summers are always so sad. And that nothing dro- nothing revs Madeline's engine more. Speaking of which. Go ahead, I was going to was, that was, that was No, no, you go. Keep going. All right. Um, at some <laughs> point. This is this is the Scott part. I'll let you talk about that. Yeah. We flip back over and Scott is having a conversation with what we think is Gene. And they're talking about their life together. And they're talking about how confused he is. And then they flash to, well, what's something you can hold on to? And he holds on like, oh, Nathan, when he had my child. And then you, you had my child. So he's clearly not talking to Gene. He's talking to Madeline. And he doesn't know that. Start, well, I mean, he knows no. that. But well, he we knows, but, yeah. and, but they kiss. Yeah. And then Gene busts in. And it's, they're doing this on um, the type of play. <laughs> and Gene busts in and pulls a, a famous line. Uh, from the Grant Morrison X Men run, which is, uh, let me guess, you can explain. I believe is the exact wording of the lie. The <laughs> yeah, it was connection awesome. is broken. Madeline has been in the quiet count cou- in the council meeting. Like, hey, where, where were you? What's going on? Oh, nothing. Just, just thinking. And Emma, who is the one in the comic that was having the affair with Scott, says, "Oh yeah, you were," or something like, "Oh," and some interesting thoughts because she's a telepath, so she was listening. In. <laughs> Um, very watching. Good yeah, yeah, yeah. Going, going. It, it, like there needs to be like a deleted scene where like Emma's just in this in the corner of the room watching, like with a brandy. Like, like that's <laughs> like that's just the, that would have cropped out part. Yes, yeah. that fantastic. And just like and it's just hanging around psychically watching Gene and Scott fight now, just like hanging hey, in the background. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it was exciting. Damn. Um, Scott and Gene have a big kind of blow up about everything. Scott says he's confused and doesn't know. Gene says, I gave up everything, the stars for you. Like they're like, they're really finally having it out about everything going on. And then suddenly Gene gets like hit in the head psychically. Like you see kind of an explosion in her head. She just bends over in pain. Yes. Uh, during that fight, like you said, uh, I was very interested to see how they wrote this because, I thought they were going to have like a clear cut bad person in the situation. And it seemed like they were setting up Scott to be that, especially after he had his explosion with uh, Trish on live TV. You're like, all right, he's, he's unraveling. You, you did a lot of great work for him in the first couple episodes to like kind of build him up as his hero. Now he's on his descent, so to speak, but they both have lines that are cutting, which I thought was interesting, uh, especially for people who hope for in sort of a relationship for them to go as, hard at each other as they did which you know again i think whoever helped write these particular scenes uh did a really good job because you know he mentions that uh she talks about you know giving up the stars for him which i don't you know he never asked her to do that but it feels like she's trying to put that on his shoulders like hey you know you're the reason why i'm not doing better in my life or doing something else different more grandiose than being with you and he's explaining to her like hey you don't even know do you do you uh, do you even know me the re- you know what you said what you said you gave up for is that really what you're giving up or you know the idea of me is is more yeah. you know, more important to you than like actually because some- i'm right here in front of you yeah it was something like do you love me or the memory of me or something like yeah yeah am i just a yeah. sweet or yeah just that wasn't love in there it's ego the music's changing and you need a chair leader father husband and you you don't trust your memories do you even love me? My love for you is the one thing I remember amid this pain and insanity. Remember or feel? Choose, Gene. Do not spin this on me. Do you love me, Gene? Or am I just a lovely memory? A beautiful memory or something to that extent. So, I, you know, like I said, when you, when you walk away from that scene, it isn't like, oh, he is in the wrong or she's being a bitch. It was kind of like, okay, well, they're both really dealing with they, what's going on. Yeah, they on. both have points. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's, you know, it's just like we're going to put a little bit of the marriage story just right in the middle of this, just right in the middle of X-Men. Just plop that down right there. I mean, with Gene and with Gene and uh, Scott, it, that's basically what you get. That's, yes. All right. Um, then we come back to uh, the Quiet Council, I think, uh, explaining that they have a new plan, basically, to present themselves to the 
rest of the world with Magneto at the helm. And they're like, hey, you know, we, we want you to, to be there. He explains like, hey, I never wanted this shit. Like, this, this is Xavier's dream. I, I just want to kill humans, basically. Yeah, he says this, which I think a lot of people are also like, is he? Does he mean this? Is is this a lot of orchestration? Well, I mean, he's got a part? statue there on the on the island, right? Exactly, and that's that's why like a lot of people are kind of like. I mean, I, when I say people, I mean viewers who are like, I mean, this is this is exactly what you say if you want them to like. Oh no, give me the hard sell, but so I can I can be like, oh no, I couldn't, I couldn't. Uh, I'm so sorry, I couldn't have any more. Oh yes, I'll take another serving. Thank you. Like yeah, he, he it feels like he could be playing them at times. I'm like, is he? Because it's Magneto, so you're like always just like. Mm. You're well, I mean, to, to, to his point, though, I'm surprised no one's asked, like, this is, you know, this this is actually the opposite of what Xavier wanted. <clears throat> this right. is what you wanted. You wanted yeah. to be, that's, you know, you you believe in segregation. He believed yeah. in integration. Like, he, he wants mutants to be back in New York, being able to live this sort of life. You want your own island. You want to establish your own, you know, culture, your own people, things like that. This is what you wanted. Anyway, he says, I'll think about it, but under one condition. I get my bitch back. And people are stretching it like, what are you talking about? And this is where uh, he he offers the proposition to Rogue. And she's, you know, kind of flipping up, or she's angry about it. She's like, you know, is this was just your plan? You know, I don't I don't belong, you know, at your side to some to a certain extent. Uh, he explains to her, like, hey, you know, because of your ability, your powers, your level of empathy, you're gonna be the perfect person for this. Plus, I someone to have sex with, so Huh? 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 That's a heck of a line. Those writers are very straight to the point. Yeah, well, they, 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 they messed around with the Scott and Gene. They go straight to the point with Rogue and uh, Magneto. Yeah. yeah. Magneto uh, so make, she makes his case. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So she uh, she leaves upset, and you you kind of don't know what she's about to do. She ends up going to tell Gambit everything. Finally, you know, things he had been suspicious about from the first two episodes or so. She sits him down and explains to him that, like, hey, we have a Beauty and the Beast kind of story that it, it happened before you and I met, where uh, I needed help with my powers. My mom told me there's a guy that could help her, help me. Uh, he ended up, you know, teaching me about, you know, more mutant history and some other things and all the things he had planned as far as, you know, Genosha and like a whole mutant island and whole mutant culture and all these things. Uh, and we happened to be able to touch because magnetism. I don't, I don't, I've never really bought that part of the story, but electromagnetic hey, fields. I mean, there we go. Yeah, magnetism is the solution to every problem in Marvel. Yeah, seems to be. Yeah, or uh, so they, need, they need to be. Yes, do hickey. Yeah, and so because they could touch, uh, it's implied that they had some kind of physical relationship uh, to whatever degree. You do see Magneto laying in bed and her kind of standing by a window, so you're led to believe that they at least slept together at some point. Uh, Gambit is sitting there throwing his cards into the fire as she's telling this <laughs> long, yeah, long cool. story. Yeah, he's just, meh. Meh. yeah, he's he's very quiet at this point. Uh, she explains to him that, like, you know, this, you know, this is what his plan is for me to like be his queen and stuff. And Gambit's at, even explaining to her like, hey, you know, being able to touch him is one thing. Like, I love you regardless, and you know, if this is what you're choosing to do from here on out, you and I are just gonna be friends. Which I thought was actually pretty stand up of him like they could have went in a bunch of toxic directions with with this part of the story and i don't think they did which is interesting because it's like we talked about this during our our couples episode it's like gambit's always been like really like a straight arrow with all this like but gambit's letty you yeah gambit gambit's like (laughs) right now (laughs) i mean but letty without without the memory issues at least like she's like i don't know what i want to do he's like no no just like Letty movie one and like, <clears throat> yeah. like he's like, he's died. He's like, no, this is, this is who I want to be with. And he like, from like, from the word go, like there's before when he had, uh, he was married. Actually, I don't know if he was, it, I don't think he was in Fidelis. They don't think he was, I think he was no, true he to his, was his fiance at the time. Right. Yeah. He's true to her at the time, but like they broke up and he left. And, but like, Which he's not like, he's, uh, I don't, the I think they, come together. Didn't they get well? They wasn't. Didn't he leave at the wedding? He left at the wedding, so Did they he, never uh, dead too. Yeah, what's up? I think that's some of it too. She supposedly died at one point too. No, she's back. She comes back. No, no, I said, but she, she supposedly she died. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. 
So like there's yeah like, he's, he's never he's, been known as a, as a cheater. He's not I mean, Wolverine. He's, he's not yeah yeah he's not like hit it and quit it and go on to the next one. He's like no the no best this is one sire, sire children everywhere. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's, 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 he's a philander with uh, in a relationship. He seems to be very dedicated. When he's not, he's not. Yeah, but he tells her like, hey, you know what? We'll, we'll just be friends from this point out. Like I said, walks out the room, leaves her. The next thing we get is what I, I, I again. I say like crawling because we get what seems to be like a gala. Everyone's there to kind of see what's about to happen as far as uh, Magneto taking the helm. Rogue shows up and just to rub it and give his face a little bit more, she flies in. And, Mag- yeah. and Magneto flies towards her just, just to yeah. kind of harken back to their previous conversation. Yeah, exactly. Which is the extra salt in the moon. Like, oh yeah, by the way, you still can't fly. Like, I'm, oh, thanks. Not only can you not touch me, you can't fly either. What else can yeah. you do, Gambit? Speak where people can understand you. Oh, just burning this guy left and right. He's sitting there uh, next to Madeline at the bar, watching this in slow motion as the two of them kind of take center stage. Everyone's kind of looking at them. They're floating around each other uh, and finally interlock hands and then eventually lips. And Gambit's had enough of this and storms out. Uh, I think Archangel and some other people who can fly all start flying and dancing around them as this scene's going on. Uh, Madeline uh, decides to also leave, and she gets a vision. She, she's Gambit, she's... like heartbroken. She's like, "Oh, like Gambit's like, I'm not gonna stay here and watch this. I'm out. Peace." Yeah, and he he steps out, and then she follows him shortly thereafter, or at least she steps out. I shouldn't say follows him, but she leaves as well. And that's when, but something happens, and she gets shot psychically as well. The same. Oh, that's what it, that's, one to, that's to the problem. Gene. Which it happens, and she doesn't go like tell anybody. She's just like. Let me just step aside and just say, like, no, like this is this is that well, pack. Like, I mean, who would you tell though, and what would you say? Well, Whoever is right next to you, I've been attacked. Help me, someone help me. Like, well, but it happens as that happens. She's kind of recovering, and suddenly a portal opens, and a grizzled old guy comes out with guns and pouches everywhere. No, but she walks well, outside. Remember, he had, yeah, yeah, she 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 sees she walks clean. past other people. Like, go like. There's people around. Was my point is like when you get psychically attacked, then you tell people. Like this is why. Like, but I'm saying, Ken, though, you're gonna sound like a lunatic because no one's understand you except me. Well, I'm I'm oh, I'm oh, oh, Jean oh. Grey for every what everyone knows. Okay, pay attention to I'm the I'm the aside from and again, the baby if you're Jean Grey and you get psychically attacked, who is going to help you? No, but, no one's gonna help me, but they're all prepared because sh- yeah. shit just happened. Like that's they, kill someone. Yeah, but they are in a world she, full of mutants. That, oh, yeah, second, Omega yeah. level. Is, yeah, this is. She had she had a similar vision when she was talking to Jean in the previous episode. Like it isn't it isn't like whatever she saw in her head was going to immediately happen. It was like she's seen some of these images already before. She's now bleeding. she's seen them again. She's bleeding. Tell someone. Okay. So what, that's I, what I'm saying. I, what I, are they, how are they help her? I they, read they, no, but <laughs> they don't have to be able to help her. Just you want them to be aware that we're something's. I'm under attack. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Get yeah, down. Keep saying like. I, she already had a vision similar to that already, and nothing happened at that time. She went on to go help Genosha however many months or time has been. So even if she has visions at that exact moment, it doesn't mean that they're going to happen 30 seconds later like they do. She could just take it and be like, all right, I've seen this before. This time I'm, my nose is bleeding. That's the only difference. I took it I, as that she stepped outside difference. to recover. I, I took it as she stepped outside to recover and like figure out, wait, what just happened? I don't... That's what I'm saying. She did. it as like... She didn't tell right. anyone because she didn't understand what was going on. She probably but should I, have. She didn't. Yeah, she probably should have. What is she going to say? Wouldn't that? matter. But... To who? Like I just had a psychic vision of this island being destroyed that I had six months ago when we were founding it as well. I just say 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 like I like something just happened. I I felt like a psychic attack, and like just again tell anybody. I don't care. There, no one's going to be able to like. Oh well, we can help. We can psychically repair your mind, but. Something just happened that is a fairly monumental moment as one of the most powerful psychics on the planet. Tell someone so they can be like, okay, okay well, so, so let's, let's imagine let's she tells right. Banshee. Guess what happens to him two minutes later? Oh, in those there two minutes, they all, could have, have, they all could have been prepared for the oncoming onslaught. Prepared not, for what? They didn't, she not didn't the, not the she onslaught. No, that's later. Yeah, different. I'm sure we'll get to that next yeah, season. We'll get that. Yeah. All right. So she steps outside to recover before she tells anybody if, if that was indeed her plan. Uh, and like Pat says, a uh, grizzled man well, comes her- pushing people out of the way saying, now he, 
he was your warning and still no one listened to him. Let's just put it that way. He kept saying, you all need to get out of here. He's pushing people to get to her. And I believe right before this, we actually see they start with a shot. This is the shot in the sky, right? Uh, before, just after the party starts. He starts. Yeah. The, we, no, when he when he departs and we, we start to see the fireworks and then the fireworks turn into other stuff. No, but the, 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 the watcher. The watcher is. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. We see the watcher when it pans down. I mean, we see. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure when the intercuts, but yes. I think it, I think it's before the party starts. I think they're showing the the where the party's going to be at, and they pan down into the party itself. Yeah. So the watcher is present, which means some shit's going to go down. It it is indeed. Um, oh, sorry, Craig. Go ahead. No, no. I thought, to your point, I think it, I think it's just kind of cool because they're kind of interconnecting some of the MCU stuff. Mm-hmm. If if people don't know who this character is, and they only know him from the MCU, they're at least showing like, hey, this. This character does exist in this cartoon cartoon universe as well. The Watcher also appeared in a previous episode of the X Men as well. The, of the X Men cartoon, cartoon, right? What's up? Yeah, in the, in the original cartoon series, oh, okay. he appeared. There. Oh, never mind that. Like, it, very similar. Well, I mean, he also wasn't introduced. It's was just kind of the same. like, well, those clouds, huh? Ah, those the Watcher over there. You should watch this. Okay. Something's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the Grizzle guy comes in and uh, I think runs into Madeline, is wide eyed, explaining to her that uh, he is coming, I think is what he says, or is able to mumble out. She explains, like, hey, you know, she recognizes him somewhat by his eyes. This episode keeps referring to the eyes several times. Uh, and then uh, he finally says something in his mind triggers where he finally realizes that that's his mom, I guess, from the memory that was implanted in his head from the previous episode when he was a child, he kind of puts two and two together and then apologizes right before he's phased back into his timeline. We're assuming. Yeah. Body slide by one troop out of there. Yeah. And that's when everything goes to shit. I mean, we get a giant green explosion and we get this really cool, like fading of the noise in and out, some screams, <clears throat> blackout and we see rogue uh lifting you know a piece of building off of her the needle comes bursting out of something as well and they realize they're trying to figure out what the hell just blew up the uh building they were all dancing in now mind you prior to him i guess between cable phasing out and that green explosion you see other green explosions happening in the background which look like fireworks a little bit so there were other attacks that are happening before it hit them specifically but uh now we see people screaming running uh, and then another green blast vaporizes a bunch of people, destroys the building, and they get a focus on what is shooting, and it's the face of a sentinel, and starts killing other people. We, like I said, we get Banshee dead. We get what in tarnation? Oh, get to the gardens! Hurry! <gasps> uh, uh, I think right before it was supposed to hit, we're. Uh, Rogue and Magneto, Nightcrawler, does his Nightcrawler thing and gets him out of there just barely. Yeah. He takes some damage. Uh, when they land in the new spot, Gambit's there to like say, hey, you know, Nightcrawler's alive, but barely. And this Sentinel thing's been killing everybody. It, uh, it, it should be pointed out, this, minute. Is, this is a Godzilla-sized Sentinel. This is bigger than all. So I think it's what he says, right? That's Gambit's phrase. And they, they, I think they may even say kaiju, but it's also the tri sensible head as well, mm-hmm. which was a creation that I think <clears throat> was it. I, I know for a fact it popped up in uh, Spider-Man comics as well. Well, I mean, yeah. it's it's reused then, but it was created back. Like they they had it in some um, Eric Larson era Spider-Man comics That's as well, because he, he oh, it's okay. when he it's when Spider-Man had his cosmic powers and he fought the tri sentinel. Yeah, so. it's kind of an amalgamation of the two of the giant sentinel from E is for Extinction. And yeah, the truck. And they doesn't well, the because it looks like a giant the, roach. Yeah, doesn't the the one in Eve for Extinction also have the tricentral head? Didn't they like repurpose yeah. that for it? I don't remember. I probably. It yeah, so the, it, it has yeah. the thorax body, and this one is the yeah. same thing. But uh, inside the body itself are other sentinels, regular sized giant sentinels. So imagine a sentinel that can carry hundreds of other sentinels. That's that's how big we're talking. It's a wild sentinel is the is what we're they're getting at is that Correct. that's the mm-hmm. from the E for Extinction timeline or storyline. Yeah. So we get the destruction of Genosha in a very similar manner. Uh this thing's going around destroying everything. We get some cool action sequences from Gambit once again. Uh him and Rogue uh go out on a mission to destroy the 
regular size giant sentinels. Uh, Magneto uh, decides to take on the giant Godzilla sentinel by himself with a train. Starts slapping that thing around. Uh, after he has, that's I think he has his uh, vision of destruction and the Holocaust. Uh, and this happens, I think, after he is knocked into his own sta- or Xavier statue. That that falls on more mutants, symbolic, very, very much. So. Yeah, that part was like that part was rough because it's like you see it falling, and like it, the realization goes past him is that this is going to fall and, and hurt all these people, and he can't do anything to stop it. Which it's yeah, it was it was it, it crushes was him. Yeah, and he's like, made it out of metal. Ooh. Just so you could be like, no, 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 I got this one. Yeah, yeah. It's like, why uh, they use plaster of Paris? It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> weird. That's a, that's a lot of paper mache. You're right. Well, the Magneto I mean, is made out of metal. The Xavier one. Yeah, made Xavier was made out of. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, like I said, he has a vision of the Holocaust happening and says, "Not it, uh, not again, or never again." I believe is his phrase, and that they will be avenged. The mutants that he just accidentally killed, and starts attacking the Sentinel with. And he also the, is- uh, got. He also says the line too, like we will not, we will not wonder if we could have done more, and, or we could not have saved more. Like he's like, which is it feels like a time, a little bit of a nod to Schindler's List. It's like you know, I could have got more out, yes. and it, it's that moment. Yeah. I was like, no, like we will not wonder how, like if we could it, have done more to save these people. It, it, at at that, that point, when point. when Magneto gets saved um, earlier, before I think it's before they he goes to fight the giant Sentinel one on one. Um, he sends a rogue and Gambit to go save the Morlocks because the Morlocks are trapped and he had promised them that he would protect them. And the Morlocks, right, yeah. if anyone that knows the history of the Morlocks, they get crapped on a lot. So, Which I find ironic that they send them to go in and it's Gambit that shows up because Gambit yeah. doesn't have a very good track record with the Morlocks. Yeah, in, in the comics, Gambit is actually a uh, I mean. The- Mutant massacre, kind of. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I was gonna say we. I don't think we, we don't talk. We I guess in the comic we in the cartoon we don't talk about that. That didn't didn't necessarily happen. Maybe okay. yeah. we don't. Know. Right. It, it's it's a Maybe. nice nod as kind of like a redemption for yeah. Gambit. Yeah. Well, because I mean, do they in the comic? Did they even see him, or he just leads them there and then realizes what's happening after the fact? Like I don't know if they're able to pinpoint him. Are they? No, no, no. In, in the comic, it's actually not even revealed that he was that he did it until years later. It's essentially it's essentially a retcon. No, but I'm saying he was like, he was right, but he was. I'm saying like the moralist would be like he's the one who got us all killed. Like they don't even see him. He right. just says like, "Hey, right, this is yeah. where they're at." Okay, right. So even if so, yeah, even if they had, you know, whatever. Anyway, he ends up saving them with uh, again another cool scene. Uh, it starts escorting them out, and uh, when they get out of the building, that's when you see Magneto come flying across the screen slams into a you know a uh, rock or whatever he's getting tossed around by the signal which again they had this courageous moment where it looked like he's gonna be able to kind of defeat it a little bit with the train but apparently this thing is that much more powerful that it, you know it's kicking his ass and knocking him back uh and then it identifies which i thought that i wanted to get in this which i thought you know they did the, the nod another nod where they said omega level mutant and then shift over to magnet i was like you sons of bitches it was first looking at the game and i was like yes he's gonna get his due <laughs> And then they said, "Go fuck yourself." This is the reality, and it targets Magneto. I mean, and I'm I'm very curious. What is this like? What is this entire Sentinel made out of? Because it's like it's because it's a wild Sentinel. It's just kind of made out of whatever was nearby, and like all of that's not ferrous metal. So he couldn't just be like bits and pieces. Like he has to use the train. I mean, I know that it's it's just for story purposes, but like all the parts that the Sentinel is, none of it's ferrous metal that you can pull apart. Come on now, like that's maybe not that's questionable, I guess. But then the little bits that are in there just shake the living shit out of them, like and just use them as. I mean, there's yeah, there's things you could do. Come on, he. If all right, if I'm trying to to come up with something here, he is also reacting, trying to save people as well. Yeah, um, you know, it's heat of battle, but you're right. It's all yeah. it's he's on along. the back heel. It's all yeah. It's it's all yeah. It's, it's fine. I I just I want to point out the animation throughout this entire sequence is amazing. Yeah, oh, yeah. Do such an incredible job. To, you get, you really do feel the visceral panic and terror of what's going on. They show you from the ground level when storm, when the initial attack happens, and they kind of blow up the gala, and you get that almost like Saving Private Ryan first person. What's going on? Hear the ringing in your head, and then you see Rogue kind of 
regain her senses. It's just it's 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 beautifully done the entire thing. Yeah, no, they definitely did. They they saved their budget for this last like ten minutes of the <laughs> yeah. Of the uh, between across everyone, like I said, everyone's having a moment in this. Um, even the moment that Nightcrawler has, that that was done pretty awesome. Uh, so we get uh, the Sentinel you, re- recognizing that he's an Omega level mutant. So they focus his entire, you know, blast or energy on Magneto, who and puts he up is a shield. With the Morlocks at this point. Well, because yeah, because Gambit had just walked them across, and he can't fire over them, mm-hmm. so they're all in the same area. Uh, it just happens to be that Rogue and Gambit are outside of this bubble that he creates in- initially. Uh, and then he shoes them off, uh, puts them up against a pole and, you know, kind of puts them in place so that they're not getting attacked by the blast. So he's doing, Magneto's doing, uh, double the work. He's protecting the Morlocks from, uh, the blast and he's also keeping Rogue and Gamut at bay. I think he, at some point realizes that he's probably not going to make it. So he ends up covering Rogue and Gambit who are, you know, about a few hundred yards away. Uh, and then does, uh, the sad German line of. Uh, what does it say? Don't be afraid. I think it is. Is is at least translated on the show as that. I'm Don't sure. be afraid. Yeah. yeah. And he says it to Leech, which Leech. is super depressing because he had promised Leech that he would never have to be afraid again. Yeah. And uh, he couldn't apparently keep maintain that promise. And so Leech looks up at him, uh, and the Sentinel ends up eviscerating everyone in that bubble. Uh, recognizes that the Omega Level mutant's been taken care of, and starts to turn away and walk away. Uh, Rogue, having watched the way that she previously loved, or at least liked a lot, uh, die. Well, real quick, it- point out, he actually rejects Magneto as a lover when they're when they're float dancing. Oh yeah, we totally. She says that, she's yeah. going to go with Gambit. She has the realization. Well, that, oh, I love him. So yeah, she actually uses the same line that he used when he explained to her that like you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's more than uh, I forget the exact word that he uses, but it's basically more than just touch. You know, you, yeah, you love somebody. Yeah. And so she, she said it's more Magneto. than a feeling. More than a feeling. She said it just like that too. And Magneto's like, what the hell? Yeah. Why? Why? Uh, this isn't karaoke. Why would you do this? <laughs> she kisses Magneto, realizes that you should still love a gambit. Sir. And then we flash forward. Carry on. I did real the yeah. show. Continue. But either way, uh, she's distraught that he's gone. She's in tears and wants to take out the signal. Flies towards it. Gambit realizes that she's going to get killed. Uh, when the Sentinel recognizes that she's coming because he's killed everything in its path so far, and Magneto's pretty powerful. So he decides to take his motorcycle that he's been using for the last like 10 minutes to like you know cut down other uh, Sentinels, charges it up and throws it at Rogue to get her out of the way uh, of an oncoming blast, which again would have killed her. Uh, and then the Sentinel targets Nightcrawler and then some remaining mutants on a rooftop that you know Nightcrawler's getting back to you know on his feet or whatever. And he's about to take out them out, and Gambit decides to go after the Sentinel. He starts running after it. Uh, Sentinel shoots in front of him and creates this kind of wall thing. Gambit uses his leverage, uh, jumps in, into the path of the Sentinel to kind of, I guess his plan was to hit it with a stick that was charged up, and then he could then do something else with it. But it's intercepted by some random barbed piece that yeah. came out of the Sentinel and runs him through on his side or not. Yeah, I mean, they, they they put a wire out there. To, yeah. yeah. It catches him, brings him over, and kind of puts it, you know, in its eyesight. Uh, Gambit uh, uses his line uh, about his name, name's Gambit, and which is the title of the episode, remember it. And he uses that, uh, in pa- being impaled, to charge up the entire Sentinel, which I thought was pretty cool, and blow it up. Gambit, see your bet, and raise it. You know. Remember it. We are then flash. We are then shot over to the mansion, which is they're getting news coverage of the massacre. And they started explaining, you know, how bad the graphic images they're about to see are. Cyclops is demanding to know how many are dead. No one answers because nobody knows. Uh, Beast has his head in his hands. Everyone's kind of super depressed. Uh, then it cuts back to a very, very quiet scene. Or you kind of hear some rubble falling, but that's about it. And you see Rogue holding Gambit 
or what's left of his body, uh, crying over him, touching his face, caressing him, and realizing that uh, nothing's happening because he's dead, you know, because she, she has no gloves on. So uh, normally, if she were to touch him, she'd either drain his power or something would happen. They'd have a transfer of energy. Uh, but nothing's happening because he's dead. And this is what got me because the scene cuts off with her still talking, but it's all black. And it's just the voice actress explaining that she can't feel him and crying you know, a few cries or whatever. And then you get the very somber version of the X-Men theme song as you go to the ending credits. I thought that was super well done. Actually brought tears to my eyes because I'm like, that was a very super sad moment. Uh, it, was, it was very gutting for me. Uh, but... You know, ever and I, I think if you if you watch this episode by now, everyone's had the reaction to it. And there, I think a lot of people had a very similar thing. Like, you know, just the last ten minutes of this episode were just a what the f moment for a lot of people because they throw so much at him. It's it's so yeah. it's not it's a tonal change, but not one that does that does feels unearned. You know, it, it you know it's been pretty X Men cartoony up to this point. It dealt with like you know, kind of serious issues and did that, but it was still very cartoon. And this, this is a shift, but it didn't feel like so out of left field because they kind of hinted that bad stuff was coming. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of foreshadowing I, for them. Yeah, good, okay. Yeah. I would say like, it, it, my wife was like, she she was wrecked. She's like, what did, what did you just do to me? Like, what, how, how, I, she was not prepared. Uh, unfortunately, I had had it spoiled by the internet because people can't bother to be like, I, I just want to show the very last image from the movies and the thing and just spoil for people because I'm a heartless piece of crap. And I, so it's like, I, I knew what was going to come and I just, especially like seeing the, like the title, like it, it was always one of my favorite, like as a kid when they were fighting, I want to say they were fighting the dark riders in the cartoon, but that's when Gambit said like the name's Gambit blows up a dude. Remember it. Like, I love that line. It was always fun as a kid to say stuff like that. Or uh, you know, kinetic card from the from the game, but like so, see yeah. that line in the in the beginning, like oh, this is gonna be that's gonna they're gonna hit it hard, and it's it's really powerful. And well, it's, see, I, to your point, Ken, when I saw that title, I was like, oh, Gambit's going to. I, I thought he was gonna do you know, I thought he was gonna be toxic and like you know have this whole breakup with with Rogue and be an asshole about it, and then Lee, which is why I was like, oh, okay, I see the title. I see, I get that. I didn't obviously see what was. To have any clue that that was going to happen, yeah, uh, not to that extent. And you know the way they show it too. Like I said, it's to Pat's point with the animation. And everything it was very visceral. Uh, mm-hmm. it, 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 the way he gets stabbed, and the way you're just kind of like, up until this point, he'd been rocking everything. Like he'd he'd already killed a few Sentinels. He'd been kind of, you know, doing his thing, and it didn't seem like they were going to. I mean, you'd already just killed off Magneto five minutes prior. So like, I mean, you, I don't think we thinking, killed him off though. Fair he's, enough. Fair enough. He's yeah. He's knocked it, out. So that's I think that's all. At least it's the show's concerned. Oh, I just realized he's next to Leech. Leech could also been like, okay, turn off everyone's powers. Now we won't register for the Sentinel. So that's why it no longer reads the Omega level Sentinel because, or I'm sorry, the Omega level threat. It's like, oh, uh, I don't see any more mutant powers down there because Leech turned them all off. I mean, so that's, that's a possibility, what, right? Because definitely. he's just like, no. If, if they think we're dead, we're dead. Like, we're just. We're all sleeping here. No, like, that's and Lee, that's I because I think Magneto's coming back. I, I think Magneto. Ma- I think Magneto plans on this, camera, yeah. right? That's what we were. Yeah, that's the thought too. Sorry, Pat. I. Oh, I'm that? sorry. I, I I jumped in. No, I was saying Leech also makes it where you can't be see on camera too, right? We're gonna work that in as well. We're gonna work that in. Yeah. So it's like it's like yeah, I, I did this. I did it twice. <laughs> I mean, you definitely. That's my secondary I mean, evolution. Yeah. At this point, the way the show is going. That I wouldn't, you know, I'm not going to say no to any option. I think they've done a good job of commingling a lot of stories. I wouldn't say effortlessly, effortlessly, because I don't know how much time it took to do all this, but it seems you could say seamlessly. Fluid. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, and very much so. And so we could definitely like I, that, like as we're starting to go for me, like I, I did watch today's episode, so I know where the next episode goes. <laughs> me too. Yeah. But there is also like the idea of like, how do we step past this? And it's like with our own future knowledge and stuff, because we know that a lot of this in this particular episode pulls from E is for Extinction, in that, spoilers for the comic, is when we get the introduction of secondary mutations because Emma Frost survives, the, but she's one of the few survivors because she gets her diamond form here. Could mm-hmm. the, could we be seeing that this season? Which, 
I mean, Emma Frost is a big enough player to to get a get that moment come up. It'd be surprising to see that already here in '97, but we're kind of okay. Like we're they're picking and choosing what they want to to do, and it's it's definitely to like it's doing it's done very well. So I mean, I can see you're already that. you're down Magneto, you're down Xavier, you're down Gambit, you're down Bishop. Like I. I I could see them starting to filter, at least for the next episode. Storm, you're, you're still down Storm. You're right down now. Storm. So I'm like, you, I can see them filtering in new X Men to be like, hey, this is your new X Men team until you know at some point, hopefully Cable fixes some of this, or you know maybe get some mutant protocols from like again the Krakoa era or something like that, to where you know you get some of these old mainstays back, and I think it would be a good, good fill in for them, especially if you know Jean kind of having her issues being a telepath. Here's a more Steady telepath for you guys right now. Yeah. Um, do we, uh, uh, are we gonna, from here, are we going to move into kind of just like speculation and, and ideas? Because we don't, we, yeah, I just, had, I just, I just want to have a one question conversation about the Omega 11 mutant thing because I'm, I'm still, as a, as a Gambit fan, I've always wanted that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I wanted to understand what the classification is for Omega 11 mutants. And is there, is there another mutant? That we there know is, of in the X Men universe that that has Gambit's powers, or power set. It has, like it's it's Gambit's it's not specific power set. No. Yeah. It's not like, that you're the best at your power. It is that you have an unlimited potential to use your power. So that's correct. why, um, you know, Jean Grey is an Omega level mutant because. But she, I, th- but I'm wondering, like, how does how does a Sentinel make that calculation on the fly? It has. I don't know if you've ever seen a, a show called Dragon Ball Z. It has a little, like, viewfinder <laughs> on the side of its head as part of its integrated. Power levels 8,000 power. Wait, it's over 9. Achita, what did you say his power level is? It's over 9,000. Ah! 9,000! And it's like, <laughs> she's over 9,000! Anything over 9,000, immediately <laughs> Omega level. That's how it works. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Well, because I'm just saying, like, you, you, you classified Magneto as an Omega level mutant, but it was Gamma that took you out. Well, that right. doesn't mean... Well, I mean, yeah. Go for it. Well, I just, we don't... The argument is that Gambit, there is an upper limit to what Gambit can do. He can only charge so much. Now, did he overcharge? And that's partially the reason he died. Maybe. I don't know. But it, it's also Omega Leo is always a little. It's whatever you need it to be for the writer at the time as well. Okay. Because, like, is G- Gene's considered Omega Leo, right? Yes. But not Xavier. No. Which Correct. I find interesting. Uh, Nor is so Scott. I, just, I pulled up a quick. For, uh, yeah, I pulled up a quick list from uh, fandom dot the Marvel the X Men Wikia, and there's about like fifteen ish characters that are on there. I think the total is that are right considered now. Omega level mutants, and I know that from the ongoing series in the comic or in the in the show, or what do you mean? In in the Marvel universe, in the Marvel. Mutant Sorry, I think I've seen twenty five Omega level mutants. Black gentleman. Because well, we have Polaris and we have Magneto, right? And Polaris isn't considered an Omega level mutant, but Magneto is, right? Yeah, Magneto is an Omega level mutant. Polaris is not because Polaris doesn't have the same um, lack of upper bounds that Magneto has. A lot and of the Omega reason, level mutants. Is a reason why she does? Does it? The writer, they just decided like Magneto can do this much, and Polaris isn't as powerful. That's all. I just feel like there's no reason why her potential couldn't be Magneto's as well. I want the ones that we are just, we are just at the fiat of the writer. Skill, the yeah. Title. Yeah. I mean, I, and, and again, I, I am, I'm acknowledging what you guys are saying and I'm not arguing against you guys. I'm just continuing this argument. Feels like, like you are. You have, no, no, no. You guys are absolutely correct. It is up to the writer. Cause yeah. I mean, Iceman became an Omega level mutant, became one. Like he, he's now considered one. Yeah, and it's one of these two, like, where in, like, some of the stories, I know there's a point where Emma Frost takes over, spoilers for the comics, folks, Emma Frost takes over uh, Bobby Drake's mind, it's like, you know, you, like, I she's trying to live, so she uses Bobby to mm-hmm. save herself, and, yeah. like, he, and he's, like, he admits later on, like, 
Yeah, she's like, I never, th- I never thought of trying that. Like, why not? And like, that's that's where he has potential. <clears throat> and I was trying to say earlier, but my signal is bad because I opened up another window. Is that in there was an ongoing series where there's an alternate timeline where Gambit is Omega level mutant because he never had his powers capped by Mister Sinister, and so like there are opportunities out there, but it's a it's it to the point of it always comes down to the writer. Like there are ones who are clearly Omega level, like you have David Heller who is a uh, Professor X's son who's like can warp reality and or no sorry, I'm thinking Proteus. I don't know. I was thinking uh, Legion is David Heller. Proteus is. I mean, he's Taggart. also Mori Taggart. Yeah, it's like there's and... there's a bunch of different <clears throat> people out there who are like just can alter reality is almost like they Franklin, right Franklin Richards. If he's a mutant currently, sure, that's okay. that's a discussion for another podcast, yeah, I yeah. suppose. Sadly, okay. um, but yeah, so uh, like there Jamie... are Jamie Sorry. Braddock, and um, what is the bad guy from the Captain Britain comic? He appeared in. Um... Outer world. Oh, yeah. He's the well. He's the other brother, much like uh, Mikhail Rasputin. He's the other brother who also has like crazy level powers and stuff. Just a lot of a lot of crazy level, a lot, a lot of reality warpers out there. Yeah, basically. Okay, I just again, I was like, I, I felt like I, I was under the impression that it was like you know you were the best, particularly at that skill set, but you just said F levels. And I wonder if that's why, like, things demonstrated that the Sentinels have recorded. Like, we've seen them do these things. This is why we consider them that. Because I'm like, just looking at them, you, you, you couldn't imagine how creative they're going to be with what they do. Because, again, they didn't see Gambit coming. They saw Magneto coming. Yeah. And they were able to pretty much snuff him out. But it was essentially Gambit's creativity and using his powers that got that got the Sentinel in the very end. It- you know, we also don't know how they're doing it because Magneto is a known entity. Like the Omega level mutants they targeted were known entities. Like, yeah, we know how powerful they are. So it may be there's not a power reading. It may be just a database like, yep, that's an Omega. Get him. We know what yeah. he can do. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'm sad. And now, then is, is Ro considered one? No. No. Interesting, because she could have all the powers. She could, but I mean, there's... <clears throat> She's shown that she doesn't always keep the powers. And like it's sometimes they'll run out, and so there's that aspect of it. One of the only reasons she kept Captain Marvel's powers because they were like Cree base and they, Captain they Marvel's was a bitch. I mean, that's a discussion for another <laughs> podcast, I suppose. Um <laughs> She's a cat. She's a uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, well, there was also like uh I mean, she's gotten to the point where she can absorb powers without touching anybody now, though. Like she can consciously do it. Oh yeah, no, she's she's getting power creeped hardcore in the comics, not in the show, but yeah, in the, correct in the comics. Yeah, um, there is. So here's the thing. Here's the question that I, I pose for you folks: What do we think? Uh, so what do we think is going to happen with Gambit being gone? How is this going to be? Are we going to go on with this? What's the thought there? Yeah, I I, just, I wonder how. What version of Rogue do we get then? I mean, what, what do you think they're going to pull from now? I I have just, an answer, but I also posed the question, so that's why I was... Uh, I, uh, to answer your question more directly, yes, they're going to go on without Gambit for, I think, the remainder of this season. Uh, they, may, they may bring him back towards the end if if they can figure out a way to like, kind of like reset this. I don't think he's going to be gone out of this series in season two, but I think in order for this episode he, to have more, have more of a lasting effect, they're going to keep him gone for a quick minute. I I I really think we're heading towards crack color level of of shenanigans with bringing back people to life. I think I think that is where we end up. I don't know if we end up like the very end of this season. Um like Xavier comes back from the bird from the bird people and like goes, "Hey guys, guess what? Birdman's back." <laughs> it's time for Birdman to fly. <laughs> Does a couple sweet ducks. <laughs> so I have I have a theory that that's as yeah. time has progressed and the story's just gone on, I have ideas and machinations for where they're going. So we've seeded a bit that uh cable's coming here and he's like, he, you know, he's coming, blah blah blah. I gotta stop it. I there's times like for like a week there, I'm like, oh, are they gonna do Cassandra Nova? Because we've got potentially Cassandra Nova in the Deadpool Wolverine movie. People are gonna learn who this character is. Um there's nods and stuff there. 
But there's also just a long history of, especially in this cartoon, of Cable being the the opposite to Apocalypse. He's there to fight Apocalypse. He was essentially Mister Sinister doesn't want to be controlled by Apocalypse anymore. So he's like, I'm going to put pieces, uh, uh, chess pieces in place to take him down. And so Apocalypse coming is, you know, in in my head, Apocalypse is in the horizon. So if you'll turn your attention to the Discord chat, you'll see an image that might uh, give you an idea of where I think they're going next with Gambit. Um, For those that are at home, they might be remembering, Gambit became a horseman of Apocalypse. He was death. And there was in that time frame, we also saw Sunfire, who we have seen in the cartoon, who was a famine. We yes. saw Pestilence, Angel's which was dead. hilarious. Angel's dead. I mean, Angel, I think we, did we see Angel there? I thought we saw Angel on Genosha. Did we yeah, see him there? Yeah, that's the thing. Angel is, well, and Mark has already right, right. right. Oh, yeah. Sorry, so, was, like, so it was, it was, say, uh, who was who again? Please, one more time. In the, in the, the horseman set that, that I'm thinking of, it was Polaris as, as Pestilence, uh, fire, uh, Sunfire as Famine, Gamut as Death. And then a new character um, as the other one that I can't War. think of. War. Thank you. And so it's like those are those were the four like the four pieces. But we've also had Wolverine as death. We've had Archangel's death. We've had other characters that when we we've had Morlocks that that were there as well. So it's like there's plenty of like like characters that we saw perish in this attack could very much come back as Apocalypse's weapons to be like. Oh yeah, I was just setting the board so that I could have my pieces here as well. And like, imagine Rogue having to fight off. I mean, it, it when it happened in the comics, it was pretty like rough. But imagine that happening here too. Like, this could be. I don't know. We're it's not, it, maybe it's tinfoil hat tier stuff, but I'm like that would be that'd be some chess pieces right there. They're pulling from all over the place. We're not going to get the twelve, are we? Because that would not be. Good. Oh, I, I hope not. I don't. Like, that, yeah, that's. Can I, I explain that. People are scratching their head. Uh, I don't want to. <laughs> twelve <laughs> is a, quick. It, the twelve is an apocalypse story about I don't, gathering the twelve mutants to stop apocalypse, but turns out it's apocalypse's scheme so that he can apocalypse himself. Whatever ends up, Scott Summer <laughs> dies. Just, Cyclops dies for a minute, comes back, and that's what starts all the problems with him and Gene and the comic. It it's a hot mess that everyone would like to forget. I feel like we're going to get a little bit of the mashup of what's happening currently in the Fall of Krakoa sort of thing. We're getting a mix of sinister plus humans dislike mutants uh, situation going on. So where because we saw we saw the friends of humanity and we saw them play, messing around with pieces of giant sentinels left over or whatever. So they have access to parts of sentinels. Uh, we also see, uh, to to Ken's point, uh, what's the guy that uh, was in the picture with Forge? Oh, Bastion. Bastion. Uh, so some people I think we like... saw Bastion on Genosha too. Some people right. So we're have said so that. we're dealing in, with in videos. And to to see, you know, I, I would assume an advanced version of a Sentinel would be able to concoct this kaiju Sentinel somehow, like that. Like yeah. he's had the time and the. The resources to do that so we're going to get versions of sentinels and i think we're, that'll lead to like you know, maybe a nimrod situation with cable and some other people uh maybe we get a future with we get a future shot of or maybe a present shot of cable coming back to kind of like you know reset some of this friends of humanity slash sinister combination stuff uh yeah. and i think that'll help fast forward from 97 to a lot of the stuff we're seeing now so Sorry, go ahead. Ken. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask. So, Ken, you, who, who's behind the Sentinel attack? You are saying Apocalypse. Apocalypse and his 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 machinations, because at the okay. root of it, Apocalypse is always pushing for. He's like survival of the fittest. If you didn't live this attack, this like that's the reasoning behind it. Because it, it is kind of questionable. Why would Apocalypse? What does he have to gain from the Sentinel attack if it's not Cassandra Nova? Which I also thought it could be Cassandra Nova for a good amount of time. I mean, it still can be. Right, it, it still could be, and then also she could be working with Apocalypse. Who, who knows? It could be any number of things because comics and they're pulled from a lot of stuff. But just when I started to think about why, like, how do we handle Gambit's death moving moving forward? Gambit can come back as death 
and or as a different whichever one you want to do. And he could be any of the horsemen, he, and you could even do our. Oh no, we already did Archangel as that. So maybe not him. But to my point, like he can come back, and that would push Apocalypse's storyline further up, and kind of keep get us moving towards that storyline. Which I mean, there's plenty of other storylines to pull from as well. But I just thought that that would be a an interesting well, they, way to they, bring Gambit back. In this episode, at the very intro, they show Apocalypse. They've shown him twice, I think, in the intro already, being fought by X Men. So they're hinting at yeah, they can, and then being around at some point. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I really thought I, I got off the Cassandra Nova train. I don't know why. It's, no, I don't think that's it. I really the, thought the reason why I got off it was because Xavier's dead. Like her, her whole reason for exacting the Joseph massacre was to get back at Xavier's, particularly. And if he's dead, yeah. I'm like, I don't see her. I mean, he's got a big ass statue in Genosha. Like, yeah, and, that, and it's and it's the first one that gets destroyed, not Magneto's. Show right, the but the, is, but the idea again, the idea. Well, fair enough, but I think the idea is to to watch him watch the like she wants to be sitting next to him with tears in his eyes as he watches his X Men and mutants and his dream die. Yeah, if he's already dead, what's the point of doing this? Um, like, who who is it hurting other than I destroy guess, the, destroy his? We don't know. Her. I I, yeah. I agree. I'm I'm not. I really thought we were dealing with like a Nimrod. Bastion, Omega Sentinel. That that was my oh, this is this is a cable problem. It's future Sentinels coming back yeah. doing it. But the, the apocalypse stuff makes a lot of sense. Kareem, who you got? I got Sentinels. Sentinels and humans uh seem to be okay. at least so far, this is the two things they've actually presented. Maybe I'm just not being more as creative as Kid is. Like I I can see merit to what he's saying, but you know, wholeheartedly. I'm just being very basic by like, hey, they showed us Sentinels. They showed us humans. Uh, what's what's the guy's name that had the the gun? Um, the executioner. Like that's what they've shown us so far. And yeah, there is future precedent in the storylines we're getting now that have a very similar tone. Like again, the Fall Guy Koa is very in line with this, you know, massacre at whatever gala ball this is. Like it's very, it almost kind of mirrors that with a little bit of the visuals from Eve's for Extinction. So I I, don't, hey, I can see them saying like, hey, you know, it's just it's just that it's just humans. And Sentinels got together and said, you know what? Let's get rid of the mutants. And I think Bashing being a, a, a future version of a Sentinel is like, hey, I know how to get us there. We'll start off with this giant one and it'll evolve into what I am now, which means that we'll at some point get Nimrod because I think, isn't he like an evolution of Nimrod at some, uh, or to a certain extent? Or is it the other way We've already had Nimrod in the original right. series. I think, yeah. So it's like, he's from the future. Right. He's from the future and it's a whole time travel thing. Um, but Bastion is kind of like the, the he's the missing link that we're that you're you're piloting towards is that Bastion's there in the middle and we saw half of an image of him in the at the he, life and death. He, of he at least exists in this universe. Yeah, so we we've had we've had kind of nods to it. And Operation Zero Tolerance can definitely be there. And that, that could just end up being the, the storyline too, and that's definitely viable. I mean it's it, just it, like, it, it plays into the forge aspect of it because now we can bring mm-hmm. if if for whatever reason forged and Storm play back into the story somehow. <clears throat> he'll, he'll slot right back in. He'll be like, "Hey, I know, I know. I, he, we at least know he knows the one guy from yeah. from the past version of Mystique or whatever." Yeah. He he yeah he's tied to the story. So yeah, that's that's definitely possible. And I'm not even saying like I said the apocalypse thing could be a a red um could be a crazy tinfoil hat thing. I just it like certain pieces of them of a cable being there. And saying like he's coming, like that 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 that's where my thought would yeah. be. Yeah. I can, I can absolutely. I'm gonna... uh, think. Um, I believe there's ten, right? Is it ten? Okay, so we got. I think so. We got five. Oh, Let's um, get rid of half of that story. Yeah. Um, yeah. The reason why I, I still thought it could have been Cassandra Nova when he said he is because Cassandra Nova is bald. So you know, for all Cable knows, it it is a he to him if he's only seen her from afar. Yeah, that that's been the, that's been the the thing that a lot of people are saying is like he genders the 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 villain in the, his statement like oh he is coming. It's like was he gendering the Sentinels? They like oh the Sentinels coming. He is coming. Or is it Apocalypse? Is it Mister Sinister? Because we get we've we haven't really had any Apocalypse this season. We've had a lot of Mister Sinister. So it's like is it just him? Like it's it is a bit nebulous. So it could be any like. But again, a, why would Sinister destroy all that sweet sweet genetics that he needs? He's already copied all of them. He's like, they're all tr- there. I've already got copies of those in my bio uh, case. Like, I don't, I, I'm looking for new, I, I need new toys. I don't care. About new hotness. Because I feel like the, I like the, yeah. I like the yeah. Sentinels had like 
an unmitigated amount of like destruction in their protocols. Like it wasn't like grab me, sit, grab me mutants that I need. It was like destroy whatever you see that moves. Right. Yeah. And, and that's why I think like the apocalypse survival of the fittest yeah. angle. I'm just saying as far as industry being behind it, I feel yeah. like he'd have been like, no, capture these people, bring yeah. them back to me so I can play with them versus like eviscerate them. Yeah. Also, so it's also more like he one works for the other too. So it's like there's like, yeah. Uh, are we finally sold on uh, what's the blonde lady's name? Being Mystique. Val Cooper. There was there was there's, there were there yeah, were, there's, there's two there's scenes like in this two looks episode. yeah where you're like Val what's what's going on here yeah when Rogue shows up or when she when when uh, Magneto explains that he had you know made the uh, decision to be the you know leader of Genosha if Rogue would be by his side and Val. Very earnestly asked, like, what did she say? Uh, and yeah. then when yeah. Rogue shows up, she's shocked, and Magneto just pushes her aside. You can see this kind of like deflation in her as he goes to meet Rogue. That was, you know, one ish scene combined together. And then the look of terror in her face when the Sentinels are destroying mutants. Now, it could have just been because the, mut- the Sentinels are destroying things <clears throat> that were moving. Yeah. But I wonder if she realizes that, or if she thought, like, hey, I am also mutant. This thing will shoot and kill me as well. Yeah, but no way. I, I thought it, I was curious, but wait, it's one of the things. It's like and once it, it's revealed, then we'll be like, oh, okay, yeah. We call. Once it. you say, once you say it's mystique, then I wonder. Okay, did she have a hand in this? Yeah, because you know, I feel like she mystique. might have had a hand in setting it up, but not maybe the amount of destruction that followed. Yeah, she didn't know the away. level of what. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. It, it, it could be sinister mixed with humans, and he also too was like, you know what? I don't. Well, I signed on to get rid of specific mutants, and you guys went a little bit too far. Maybe that was his deal in this whole thing. So, the next episodes we have Bright Eyes, Cream okay. referencing possibly, you know, uh, Bright Clops. Clops. Yes. Uh, and then uh, eight, ep- that's episode seven. Eight, nine, and 10 are all Tolerance is Extinction, part one, two, and three. That's Ooh. the penalty. And- yeah. And crazy enough, like as much as, uh, and I love why I said this message I think, to to us in the Discord chatting that I love watching people's reactions to this because it reminded me of like in game the way that like eh, a lot of people had very similar reactions to this and it was very like visceral for a lot of people who were watching it. I think someone had put together like the montage of people's reactions to it, and a lot of them were very similar. But it gave you that same kind of communal emotional feel that people got when they when uh, Cat picks up the hammer uh in endgame and you're just like everyone's like going crazy or when everyone starts coming out of the portals at the you know right before he says uh avengers assemble that that you know cathartic like oh it's happening but the um, opposite yeah <laughs> yeah it's racing yeah 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 wait what is it? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You, yo this is the the oh, this is oh, this is this is crazy He's gonna eliminate that thing. That must be his death rattle. Goodbye. He's still hurting him. He's gonna die too, though. Both of them? Because that oh, one ran game me went out like a OG yeah. triple OG golly. She lost both. Yeah. But she finally gets a chance to touch him though. Know. And this, but I said all that to say that uh, I think uh, is it is his name Bo, the writer, Derek of this. Oh, yeah, I, the 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 showrunner. You mean <laughs> showrunner slash co writer, whatever for these episodes. He's back online talking about the episodes, and he's saying that this mid-season episode is pales in comparison with, I guess, they have in the later episodes. So, I don't know, more people are going to die, or how many more harshings he's going to pull on, but apparently, like, be prepared that, like, shit's about to hit the fan later on in this in this show. If this is what he's saying, like, you know, this is a great episode, but the other episodes that are to follow bring a lot more and I'm more and you know you'll you'll have much more interesting reactions to those and I was like wow night that's saying a lot I do have I do have a question as someone that has not seen episode six were you disappointed or deflated after watching it no neither 
Okay. Yeah. Because sometimes after a big episode like this, you know, it can be like, ah, oh, man, man. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's. I think that's definitely kind of my my kind of hiccup and, and pain when people are saying like everything more from Marvel since Endgame has been crap. And I'm like, like you, yeah, you if you raise the bar so hey, high, kid, there's gonna stop be... calling me out, bitch. Yeah, you li- listen up, buddy. <laughs> Um, but yeah but there's there's like there's certain like you have your expectation raised so high i think that i i was expecting like like a mixtape like a good mixtape you're gonna have highs and lows and like you're gonna have an episode that's not gonna be like after such a big moment like that you gotta cool down a minute you know you gotta yeah i i I was like oh no this this episode's good it it tells the story it needs to tell and also i was still like good with it To be honest with you after having watched it i was like you know watching five and then watching six i was like you what they present, I don't know how you follow that. Like, you know, if you if you try to top it, you're gonna, you know, I feel like you could fall easily into uh, a little tr- uh, try hard kind of episode where it that that's where it really falls. Or if you kind of pace it, like Ken saying, like a mixtape, where it's like, all right, well, now that that's been punctuated, let's start the next sentence and mm-hmm. we'll work our way back up to another crescendo. And so I, I can see some people saying, like, oh, you know. Uh, this doesn't, you know, this doesn't match the same intensity as the as the previous episode, but you know, mm. it, I don't think it was meant to. I don't think I don't think yeah. that the way that it's the show's designed. But again, it's still very good. Yeah, and it's also okay. another argument for episodic t- television being back. Of like, oh, it, you, we had a week to digest that last episode and pick it apart with friends and and talk about it. And then this next episode, we didn't have to watch it back to back and just like cram each episode down our like. It's like, oh no, we had got to go through and enjoy the episode and experience it as a community. If that's where you, how you were able to do it, and that was good. And I, so I was like, I'm just still on the, I enjoy episodic television, and I, I like that model still. But I also did yeah. also just run through all of Fallout, so like it depends <laughs> on the storytelling. So there is that. It, uh, it reminded me of, also too of uh, of uh, Stranger Things. When they had the mm. Max episode, because that I think didn't they draw they dropped all of that one right? Yeah, Stranger Things was that just, week to week. No, yeah, it was not Stranger Things is all, all yeah they drop it all once. But I feel it's, like everyone, for whatever reason, maybe everyone just binged through it, or maybe because of the number of episodes that were released at one time. Yeah. I think it was like four or five, right? And then they yeah. finished it up the second half of the season. Mm-hmm. But when everyone got to the Max episode, I felt like everyone online had that same exact. Reactionary time frame, like it wasn't like, oh, I saw it three weeks ago, and I'm feeling it. it was like everyone got to that exact episode, and the internet was just like having a moment that they all sat in, and I think that's also when, uh, what was the name of the song? Like skyrocketed on the charts. Running up, well. uh, exactly. Uh, well, and I feel like that's what this has as well. So, you, to Ken's, to both your points, I think you could have it an episodic thing, but I think it's the timing on how you release them versus like. Well, you know, maybe just offering only four episodes and that fourth one being the, the thing, the finale one. With with Stranger Things, um, and this happens a lot, I've seen, I mean, we see this happen a lot with um, the, the full drops of entire series or entire seasons. I just feel like the internet gets so excited. So everyone feels like I have to watch it right now, which then ramps up the excitement because you don't want to miss the moment. Mm-hmm. So I You're think right. that kind of drives that as well. I, I I do enjoy the way we're doing X Men, just the way I like to ingest television. Like I'm only watching one episode of Fallout a night. I don't want to sit there. I want to watch it, think about it, and then go to the next one. I don't want to watch eight hours and not remember six of them because it was all just a blur. So yeah, and and, and I still think it also depends on the storytelling. Like if the yeah. storytelling is 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 <laughs> this storytelling is peak for just episodic, whereas like there's other shows that are just like yeah, just just. Feed him into my, into my eye holes. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, yeah, I, I'll say this uh, one last thing. Uh, I, I had mentioned this to, I think, Ken uh, in, a, in a different chat. I don't know how you follow up. And again, they're not one to one, but you follow up a live action exponent after, after this, particularly even after this fifth episode, because the way that they're doing these stories, the way that this animation is going, this, the, the voice acting again i want to credit all the voice actors for this all the writers on this obviously all the animators but like it's just being done so well at such a high level mm-hmm. that if anybody who is being introduced to the x-men 
just now like they didn't watch 90s cartoon they didn't read any of the comics they're just like hey you know what disney plus has a as a marvel related show i want to watch it and this is their introduction to x-men I, I feel like the movie is going to be lacking somewhat no they're gonna really be black, black leather it's gonna be cool don't worry about it yeah i mean i think i think that there's i mean just because i think like the next the next live action dead uh, x-men we get is deadpool th- uh three deadpool and wolverine so it's i like, mean he's essentially the, he's all the x-men so far right yeah, so what he's yeah. it's it's just the it is the it's, it's just a different flavor it's like they're they're not going to be trying to p- tell this epic story of, of mutants versus this it's going to be the cluster you know throwing everything against the wall see what explodes rubber chicken yeah. that is deadpool so it's like it, it there's going to be different presentations that people can kind of but get. my point is is that because like, deadpool is he's allowed to play on the fringes which is why you get negasonic as a, as a x-men character you get Colossus, which is, you know, he's a mainstay, but you don't really get the core. You don't get Cyclops, you don't get Gambit, you don't get Rogue, you don't get Storm, you don't get any of those people. But at some point, Marvel's going to have to face that that boulder. They're going to have to introduce those characters. And they're not going to be able to just play on the edges of, like, Deadpool. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I feel like it's... They've set the bar so high with this animated show that a live action is inherently just going to be underneath that and i don't even know if it's going to be like slightly underneath or really you're going to be disappointed like you know what the show did it better oh yeah for sure it's i i i think we'll still get something good but i also think that it's it's just hard to kind of judge people's expectations to be like to know because it's i mean how many how many of them are going to be going are going to watch this who how many will have watched this but not watched any of the x movies prior so it's like they 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 have to have experienced well, other X-Men. But I think the X-Men movies prior weren't good though. Like that's that's the other issue. It's like, yeah, you can't you you can compare it to trash and be like First oh, class was, had some great moments. All right. Yeah. Different conversation for another day, but we do need right. to rank the X-Men movies at some point. We'll do that at yeah, to a different point. I'd I'd love I'd love well, to hear I'll leave that out there. We'll leave it unanswered yeah. because it can't be answered tonight. Uh so thank you everyone for listening. Uh hope you guys yeah, got a chance to watch. Yes. Uh gotta be sure to watch like, the episode. Comment, subscribe. <laughs> if not, go out and watch it. Uh go out and read some of these comics. I, I think that'll help yeah. a lot of people get uh some added context. So uh if you need to read them digitally, where, if you have a local comic shop, go visit it. Where you want to start is X Men from nineteen ninety six to nineteen ninety nine. That's what you want to read right there. <laughs> Age of Apocalypse, everybody. That, that's, nope, that's what got nope, a lot of people right after, on board. <laughs> right after. The day after Age of Apocalypse. <laughs> oh, God. Are we going to... Oh, we like you said, we, we kind of did. We kind of didn't. I want Age of Apocalypse proper. All right. Never mind. I'm going to ramble. I'd be done. I'm done. Good night, everybody. I want, I want Onslaught. That's what I want to get to. Yeah. Oh, no. No. But, I mean, I'd be down. I think they're going to yeah. do it better than the comic. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. the best thing is they'll do it within an episode's length, like 26, 27 solid minutes. <laughs> That's about what it should have taken, given what they had in the comic. Could have done that. Agree. I totally agree. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I, I can't feel you. <laughs>